Hello tech heads. So in this video, I want to address something that I noticed uh, when teaching my students at a university that I teach at. My name is Kirsch Mackey and I am a university professor at uh, two universities. One is where I teach printed circuit board design, a formal training in printed circuit board design. And another is where I teach electronics to undergraduate students. And I found that there's a common mistake when it comes to operational amplifiers and finding the game of an operational amplifier. So in this video, I'm going to do a thorough breakdown of how I think about and analyze an operational amplifier circuit to find the gain in that circuit. The first assumption I'm going to make is that around the negative input to the op amp, the current will be considered negligible or zero. That's the first assumption. So right around here, the current, essentially no current going into the op amp. Likewise for here, negligible current going into the op amp. That means the voltage here, V minus and V plus into the op amp are the same, essentially, and I will call either of those V. So now we have a common term V. That's going to be very important later in the analysis. Step two is to start off coming up with expressions for the currents going through resistors at the top. And my current here will be I1. My other current is I2. And actually, while I'm at it, I'll call this I3 and I4. So I'm labeling my currents. And I'm assuming the direction. You can, assume, you can assume any direction you want in circuit analysis. The numbers, when you evaluate everything, will let you know where the actual current was flowing anyway. OK, so for my KCL at node 1, that will be this node right here. All of my currents going into the node, I will consider in the positive, so a positive polarity. Anything that is leaving a node, I'll consider in the negative polarity. So I've got positive I1 minus I2 is equal to zero. They're going to sum to zero according to Kirchhoff's current law. All right, step three, we're going to define or rewrite KCL in terms of the voltages going across the resistors. So voltages and resistance instead of just current. That means our voltage V in is going to be here. And this voltage will subtract. If you recall from step one, we define V here as like this node here as having a voltage V, which is really V minus, but V minus and V plus are the same on this op amp. So I'm just going to call them V. So this is V on this node. And on this node, this is going to be VO. So anywhere on this node is going to be VO. Now that we have our voltage expressions, let's rewrite the KCL equation one in terms of voltages and resistance. First of all, I'm going to rewrite this equation. So it's I1 is equal to I2 because I added I2 to both sides of the equation. Then I1 can be written as V in minus the voltage going on the opposite side of that resistor, that three kilo ohm resistor, because the current is going in that direction. If the current were going in the other direction, I would flip this. So I will write I2 in terms of the voltage at the beginning of the resistor, and then minus VO across that resistor, nine kilo ohms. Great. I'll multiply both sides by nine kilo ohms. So I've got my 9k divided by 3k will give me 3. So that's 3 times that expression. 9k divided by 9k will give me 1. So I don't really need the brackets, but I'm just showing it to make it simpler. And then that drops down to 3v in minus 3v is equal to v minus Oh, great. Now I want to write V in. Uh, I want to make an expression just for V in. Okay, so I'm going to go with moving some things around. So I've got 3 V in. And if I add 3 V to both sides, I got plus 3 V plus V minus V O. Next, it's V in is equal to 3V plus 4, well, 3V plus V is equal to 4V minus V 
we owe. Oh, don't forget the three on that. And then the VN will be equal to just 4V minus VO and divide all of that by three. So this is an expression for VN. If we were to say, um, try to plug this into the gain equation where A is equal to VO divided by VN, uh, we'd get something. But since VN is written in terms of both V and VO, that's still going to leave us with VO and V to solve for and everything. And that would be two terms inside of uh, an equation. We may not be able to solve for it. So we need some more information. Can we rewrite VO in terms of V? That way, VN and VO both have a common, uh, a common term between them. Okay. So that would be in step three. Step three is to find uh, the Kirchhoff's current law expression or equation at node two. And this is what I'm defining as node two. Okay. There is, this was node one. Okay. Let's see what our voltages are. I know my voltage, this V is the same here. The voltage here is zero or ground. The voltage on this side is still VO. And we have the voltage terms we need for the second Kirchhoff's current law. Again, according to Kirchhoff's current law, um, I'm going to write my currents leaving a node as negative and my currents entering a node as positive. Both of these currents, I3 and I4, are leaving the node, so both of them will have a negative sign in front of them. So step four is to do KCL on the second node. That would be minus I3 minus I4 is equal to, you know, they both sum to zero. All right, I'm going to rewrite this expression. So I will have this as negative I3 is equal to, if I add I4 to both sides, I'll get I4. Awesome. Remember that this only works if we assume that the current's going into the inverting and non-inverting parts of the op amp are negligible or essentially zero. Step five, write the KCL or rewrite the KCL equation in terms of its voltages and resistances. So I'll make sure that I maintain my sign negative, open parentheses, this I3 is going to be the drop of V minus the ground voltage over 2 kilo ohms. So that's the drop across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. And then on the other side, I4 will be equal to the drop across the resistor. So that's V minus VO, all divided by the resistance itself. Okay, I'm going to do a little shortcut here. So if I multiply both sides by 8 kilo ohms, that's going to be 8k times, right? And then this times 8k. I know 8k divided by 8k is going to be equal to 1. So I don't I don't really have to write anything here, but I'll put it in parentheses anyway. And then 8k divided by 2k is 4. Now I have my 4 in parentheses. This is still a minus sign, so um, don't forget that. So when I write out the rest of this expression, like if I resolve everything, this will be minus 4V. The minus multiplied by the zero is still zero anyway, minus plus or minus here, it's going to be equal to zero, but I'll still write it out. So minus times uh, minus is plus, and then four times zero is zero. One times V is V, one minus, well, one times minus VO is minus VO. And then next, we've got negative 4V is equal to V minus VO. Now, I can add VO to both sides, so that's what I'll do. VO, uh, that's just to get rid of it on the right side. And I'll add 4 V to both sides. So that's going to cancel the negative 4V on the left, and it's going to give me an extra 4V on the right. And then don't forget this V here is still there, so that's going to add my 4V. Uh, 4V plus V is equal to um, 5V. So I'll write VO is equal to 5V. Fantastic. All right, so we've, we've done step five, where we've written our second KCL equation in terms of the voltages and resistances and whatnot, and 
doing some tricks, we were able to just get a uh, voltage expression for VO with just the V, with just the V term. Earlier, I was able to get V in in terms of V and also VO. So what I can do is step six. I would substitute V for, uh, I would substitute VO. Now that I have VO written in terms of V, I can substitute VO back into this expression for V in. So let's go with step six, substitute VO. V in is equal to for V minus, instead of writing VO, we can now write 5V. Divide that by three, and that's looking fine. Let's um, evaluate this a little bit. So 4V minus 5V is equal to negative 1V. So I'll just write negative V all over three. So now we have an expression for V in that's only in terms of V. We also have an expression for VO that's only in terms of V. So that's going to be five volts here. We are cooking with gas. We're done with step six. We've written our V in and VO in terms of just one term. We can do the final step, which is to evaluate the gain of the circuit. Step seven is where we evaluate the gain A. A is equal to VO divided by V in. And I've seen students do this before where they miss this part. Okay, you, you don't want to miss this. You want to make sure you explicitly write, you rewrite your expression for VO. So VO is 5V divided by VN. VN is literally, uh, if you want to make this easier to think about, it's one third, negative one third of V. And you put all of that in parentheses. Okay, students make this mistake a lot. Because if they're rushing or under pressure, then they will miss this. All right. And sometimes I miss this if I'm not careful. So now five divided by a fraction that is negative one third, we're going to flip this fraction. So we have five B is actually being, you know, we can rewrite this as being multiplied by negative three and multiplied by, you know, if we're looking at the, the units, it's V to the negative one or uh, per volt or something like that. Or you could leave the Vs out if you want, but I like to keep it in there. And then this would be equal to negative 15 V over V. All right. And what does this actually mean or refer to? That if you have like a, say, a sinusoidal signal going into this resistor, then on the output of your operational amplifier, you're going to get a larger sinusoidal signal that's going in the opposite polarity. Okay, so if we were to overlay the original sinusoidal signal and it looks like this, right, then the new output sinusoidal signal will look like this. Let's say this is negative one and this is a one, then your output voltage, because of this operational amplifier circuit, it's going to end up being, let's say that one, you need to multiply it by negative 15. You'll get negative 15 volts on the output. And for this negative one over here, you'll get positive 15 volts on the output. So if you want to see me demonstrate this in a circuit simulator software, just to verify that this actually makes sense, this is what's going to happen. Check out the next video where I'll show it to you in circuit simulation software.